for well, yeah, 40, 40 points on 48 plays. When you look back on the film, what stood out? Um, I, you know, I was uh, pleased with our performance. I thought we did uh, some good things there. Obviously, the the flow of the game gets goofy on you sometimes, particularly when you know when we had the amount of explosives that we had, and then you on top of that, you play a team like Navy that that holds the ball for extended periods of time, and so um, I. We got a lot to clean up still, but it was a good win to get. You know, we felt like we were, like you said, I think earlier, we, we were very efficient with what it was that we wanted to get done. Um, got, got a chance to to score points and produce and improve on those goals that we had had set. It was great to get a win after a month, you know, and so I'm um, excited to set our sights towards Cincinnati now. You had guys like Mucci and Dylan Goffney and um, you know, all those guys get involved alongside Rasheed. Was that – Expected, unexpected? Was that a targeted effort to get more more receivers involved a little bit? Um, you know, I think that we've kind of had it that way, and the, some of the balls have just fallen to Rasheed. Yeah. And so um, uh, it was great to see him step up and make plays. You know, it was good to get Jordan Curley back out there healthy and ready to go. And, um, you know, he obviously was a big key factor in the game. Junior made a couple good plays, so we're excited about him being there. And, um, and then Mucci, that was a great catch on the post down through there. You know, so it's as those guys continue to – uh, make those plays, and as more attention gets paid to Rasheed, then I think it's going to give us, you know, more opportunity to distribute the ball. You know, all, all through the losing streak, it was talking about how the guys were handling it. Do you feel like there's maybe been a collective weight lifted off theirs and even your shoulders a little bit? Oh, any when it makes everything better. When it makes everything better for everybody, you know, all the time. So I do think that they, they had to battle some adversity. You know, we talked about adversity, and it's hard to schedule SMU's played in eight years, you know. So it's that we're, that we're there against – there's a team that's currently in the top ten. There's a five and two Big Ten team floating around out there and then the number one team in our conference, you know. So it's uh, – it's we, we didn't – we faced adversity, and, and we've – so far, have, have battled through that pretty good. Obviously, we've got uh, a lot of schedule left, a lot of football left to play. And so, um, you know, our guys are in a good place right now. So we just got to keep keep hammering. Looking at the film, is that maybe the best game Tanner's played this year for you guys? He's getting better and better. You know, I know um, he's early in the season, boy, he was missing some things and doing some stuff like that. And everyone, you know, it's funny how uh, the statistics of a game or the flow of a game can shine a certain light on him. And then, you know, and as you lose, boy, he, he, he got more credit than he deserved. Then he got more blame than he deserved. And, and he's kind of just stayed consistent and improved every week um, and, and is really playing at a high level right now. The, the running backs with Trey being out, what was Belton's status uh, for, for Friday? And then, you know, what do you think of the – you know, running backs collectively. Yeah, you know, um, Velton was beat up early last week and didn't, you know, we, it was kind of one of those where we got to the game, he was available to play. Um, it was a situation where he, he hadn't practiced. We had felt good about TJ and Tyler and what they had provided through the course of the week. The nature and flow of the game and what we expected from them defensively kind of played to some of their strengths too. And so kind of when we got into it, you know, I think that uh, – Certainly the snap count had something to do with that. At some point, you know, it was, boy, there just weren't enough snaps to, to have to get him in the game or to even be able to get him in the game. And so, you know, limited some of those guys that would ordinarily had had more opportunity during the course of the game. So it was good to see him back out there today. Does some of that maybe push up a little bit of the Kamar Wheaton timetable of saying, you know, maybe we're in a point where we need to just put him out there and see what he can do? Um, you know, we're, we're getting closer to that. He is getting more load every week, and, and so making sure that he can operate through that. Obviously, he's got to be able to operate within the entirety of the offense, and that's earned. That's not given, you know. And so um, he's getting better. He does a great job practicing. Um, uh, you know, he's really been intentional the last three or four weeks. Of, of trying to improve and his, you know, his focus and his intentionality while he's been out here at practice, and, and he's a guy that we got confidence in, and you know, it's if these other guys as they continue to play and, and produce for us, he, he's a guy that's going to continue to get more opportunity, I think. So, Luke Fickle and, and Cincinnati, I mean, what do they present defensively? Um, you know, and, and some of the challenges that they present, regardless of who's out there and who they lost from last year. Man, they're really good on defense. They're really well coached. They're really fast. They're really physical. You know, they're intimidating. I, I can see why, boy, people run out there and they get nervous playing Cincinnati. You know, so it's um, they have uh, uh, they, they've got a little bit of a unique front, which it seems to be more and more in college football as everyone's trying to figure out how to how to operate with this robber defense that's kind of become the fad and they kind of got their own version of it you know that now they're still at their core they're still a cover one man to man football team which is different than you know 
uh, most of those teams. But but the front itself kind of provides some challenges. Um, obviously, they got good players, and so we're going to have to win some one-on-one -on -one battles. You know, they they kind of set you up in your blocking schemes. You don't get just a ton of double teams and things like that. You got to you got to go out there and block the guy that you got to block. And if you get them blocked, then you got yards. And if you don't, which they do a great job of getting off blocks, then you don't get yards. You know, so we got to we got to be very intentional this week about our techniques and our fundamentals and and our strain. You know, our strain to finish blocks. You know, last year, what Danny was out against him. I think Reggie was still a little limited. It was maybe Rasheed's first time as being the guy. I think seven catches for 21 yards. How big is it in big games like this for your big guys to? play big oh well i think it's a great opportunity what's happening man hey what's up you good are you cold this morning in there yeah just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i hear you um so your question was oh uh the yeah it's always important for your best players to play good you know and i, I mean, if you look at the stat line from last year's games like a nightmare you know so it's um we would certainly um uh, and our kids feel that. I mean, you know, in a good way. I think. I think they know that there's pressure that they didn't perform up to what they wanted to last year. Cincinnati was a remarkable team last year, you know, and they still remain to be. But it's you know they they've 19 straight conference games, man. That's that's the, you get a shot at the champ, bring them in. But any you know, yeah, our best players got to continue to play better and better and better. And I think that they're improving, starting with Tanner. You know, Rasheed's a guy that's continuing to uh, develop wholly in our offense, you know what I mean? And and really understanding all parts of that and the intricacies of it. So. What kind of development have you seen from Tanner this year? I mean, last game seemed he really was in control. Oh, yeah, no, it was in – we kind of mentioned uh, uh, that earlier. I do think that they are um, – uh, I, I thought he got a lot of – he probably got more credit than was due early in the season, and then he got more blame than was due for those, you know, middle games right there. He's continued to control. He's, he's really doing a great job of valuing the ball and protecting the ball. Um, and he's not putting it in those situations. Obviously, he's, he's the same competitor that he's always been. I think he's hungry. I think other – I think our team's feeding off of that, you know, and it's, it's when he speaks, boy, they listen. So um, it's really fun to watch him develop as a player, and, and I do think he's playing at a high level right now.